All right. So, um, yeah, this is actually our last topic in uh, mod, or not mod, phase one. So this topic 10, we're actually going to talk about HTML, some CSS. Um, we're going to go through that really basic. We're not going to, I'm not going to show you how to create a website because that's not the point that I'm trying to, like we're trying to do for this topic. It's mostly say, hey, how can we use like data from a website and what we call like web scraping um, and actually pull that data from the a website into some format that we want. And so the idea today is that, you know, I'll show you a little bit of HTML, CSS, um, kind of thumbs up who's already like, who knows a little bit of HTML, maybe like, you kind of played around with it or in the past life you okay see some thumbs up some sideways that's okay yeah so that's good um it will do some really basic stuff just know there's a whole lot of stuff in html and like if you really wanted to make like your own website like this is like the stuff i'm going to show you is not enough um for modern day websites uh, but it can do stuff that you can actually kind of play around with it and it'll be enough for us to know how to scrape that data which is the main thing that we really want to care about for this lesson um, but yeah it's kind of all right, so let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. We will start talking about some HTML CSS. So here, share my screen here. And then you guys see my Jupyter notebook. There's my windows get moved over. I don't know why it does that. Zoom likes to put their windows behind <laughs> other windows. I don't know why I share. Okay, cool. So I see you all. Well, most of you, some of you. <laughs> all right, so, um, in the section, we're still under data engineering. It's going to be under web scraping. And there's really only two notebooks that we're going to focus on today. Okay. So let's just talk about like introduction to HTML itself. So HTML, like I kind of mentioned yesterday about with XML, um, XML standing for extensible markup language. HTML stands for hypertext markup language. Um, and the whole history with HTML, which is kind of cool and interesting, um, it's basically was developed more for like um, the idea with linking and stuff like that for scientific papers. Um, it's a whole cool, cool, interesting history if you're um, interested in that. But what we really care about is HTML is basically a document. And your browser, like this Chrome browser, for example, is really just pulling things up, um, pulling this document and then rendering it, um, showing something that is like viewable versus just a document and stuff like that. And we'll look at what HTML document looks like so you can kind of recognize what that looks like. Um, but just know it's kind of like the backbone of like pretty much everything you see on the web. Um, this is where like, you know, modern web web stuff is a little more complicated because there's a lot of like more dynamic, um, changing stuff, which, but like, which does add some extra stuff, but basically you can think of almost everything like you see is an HTML format of some sort. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Um, so some syntax, so it's really just specialized XML. Like we'll look at this, it looks just like XML, but it's just very specialized in like, what you can do. So, um, their tags, like, you know, this, um, the P tag, which basically stands for like paragraph. So the idea here is like basically there's different paragraphs and such. So this informs that, you know, like, oh, everything inside this tag. So you see between here, this is a paragraph. And all the browser gets essentially in the HTML is like, oh, this thing, this like value is a paragraph. And then the browser decides how they want to render that. Um, there's also some extra information too, but it's up to the browser to actually render it. So this is actually the real information on here. Um, and then attributes. So attributes, so we have tags like this guy and the attributes like we kind of showed show with XML um, are basically the stuff that's after the tag. So you can see it's still within these like, um, like what do we call these like, like um, angled brackets, right? Is that it's still within this angled brackets and there's just extra information. In this case, you can see there's H, href equals and there's some extra information here. So the tag is still is a tag, which is actually for hyperlink. And there's some information here, which is going to be the actual data about saying, oh, this is a tag. And then we see the ending tag, like you saw with XML. And then this right here is the attribute itself. So in this case, it tells us a little bit extra information to alter the contents of the tag. So in this case, this is saying, hey, this is a hyperlink right here. So hyperlink is this tag. And then basically, the content should be going to HTTPS google.com. So if I actually render this like on like a browser, this is what it looks like. And so if I click on here now, it'll actually go to google.com. Okay. So just to show you what that looks like, you can actually render, you, you'll see, you can actually render um, HTML on Jupyter Notebooks. In fact, like all Jupyter Notebooks are kind of essentially type and based on if you really want to get technical, but you can actually write HTML directly in a markdown cell and it should render as HTML. Everyone follow me so far? What's the purpose of the angled mm -hmm. bracket in the middle? Uh, oh, this guy right here? Uh, the one in the middle before click. This guy? Yeah. Yeah. So this is basically saying this is this first part. It's like you can think of it like one element. That's the actual tag. And so it's saying everything from this tag 
so onward until we see the closing tag, which is this guy right here. That's the actual like content. And then the reason why we have this ending part is like really is because we have this attribute. So if I got rid of this, right? Like, oh, that's more recognizable. So this is basically, like, oh, there's extra stuff in here, which are we called attributes. So this is basically saying, hey, this is still the start of the tag. Okay, this is still the tag itself, but everything in here is giving some information about the tag. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And I think that I hopefully you guys see that little difference there. Is that the attributes are basically saying the tag is saying, hey, this stuff between the two tag parts is like, oh, that's the content. And then this stuff, the attributes are saying, hey, what we should do something special about this tag. And that's where this example information. So uh, and then the last thing is comments. So this is a HTML comment. So this isn't really really too re relevant to us because usually we're not um, usually it's not really interesting data for us to pull in the comments, but it's useful to know that this does exist. And basically, it just starts off with an angle bracket, exclamation mark, right, exclamation point, dash dash, and then it, the ending like tag comment is this dash dash um, angle bracket. So you can see here it's like this would comment out the whole thing, and you can see here. This actually can comment out all of this. And basically, this is stuff like it just won't render. The browser is going to completely ignore it. Okay. So this brings us to once we have these parts, like, OK, we have tags, the attributes in the tags, and then comments. That's kind of like all we really have in HTML. That makes sense, kind of like um, XML. So we have something called the HTML document structure, or the DOM, so HTML DOM. Um, you hear people talk about this. So technically, um, th this is a declaration. And this is where you're, I'm going to tell you, if you work with any HTML, just so that pretty much everything in HTML is like, these are the, like, you know how in Python you have very strict rules and if you mess up, Python's like, hey, like you messed up, I can't do this. Like you messed up some syntax. HTML is notoriously for forgiving. Like it, you can technically do certain things and like it shouldn't work, but HTML is gonna try to do its best it can. And it, instead of failing, it usually just tries to do something that seems about right, um, which is kind of an interesting um, thing. So some of this stuff I'm going to show you is not actually going to be always in every HTML document. But um, it's just showing like the structure of how these documents are typically formatted and expected. So the first is usually the declaration, though note that these are technically optional, unless it's like an HTML5. So you usually see this nowadays. And note that right now, like pretty much like you see doc type HTML. Technically, you could have other things that are not HTML. But like that doesn't really exist right now because pretty much the whole website web is built on HTML. But in the future, maybe there's something that changes. Um, I'm no web developer, so I don't know exactly what that would look like. But just know that happens. Um, but the overall structure basically is all right. We say here's the declaration, which may or may not be in there, saying okay HTML, and this is almost in every one. We say okay, this next set is all HTML. Is really what this is, and then it says okay, you have something called your head and your body, and basically that's like the basic structure. And so the head is stuff that's like usually, it's not rendered. It's just extra like metadata about the HTML document. It might contain extra things like, oh, like this is how, you know, paragraphs should look. This is how, you know, what color to use in the font or what kind of font you should use. That's what generally is put in this head section. And then the body section is really just saying the content of that page. Like this is usually like what we say, okay, the body is like what we're actually seeing and stuff like that. Okay. Make sense for everyone? All right. Um, so that's like the basic thing is really just the head and the body. So usually for data stuff, we'll usually probably look at the body itself. Um, know that technically you can have some other stuff in here. So um, you can, for example, you might see body. You can also see like footer and stuff like this, like on certain HTML documents. So it's rough, but in general, you'd have just this body and this head. Okay. So some HTML elements. So this is all going to go inside basically the body itself. Um, so you have things like paragraphs. So like we saw that already, like you have paragraphs of stuff. You can have headers. So this is kind of like you can see a little bit on like my um, my Jupyter notebook. These would be like equivalent to headers right here. Essentially, oh, they're essentially sections, stuff like that. They should technically be treated as sections, but you know, web developers do whatever they want. Um, so just kind of knows that that data might be different. So the way we do a header is again that tag, and it's just H1 is being like the most important, the top header, right? And then we have H2 being like, oh, like a subheader, H3, a subheader after that. And you can go, I think, technically up to H6, maybe even further. Um, but usually, you won't see anything past H4. Like, usually, these are the main ones. Okay. 
Um, know that technically they don't have to be in order either. Usually you should see it as H1, H2, H3. You might have like H1 and then H2 and then like another H2 and then maybe H3, H3, then another H2. Like you should technically see that structure, but in reality, HTML doesn't like rely to say, oh, you need to have that structure in there. It can be out of order like, and not relevant to sections. Okay, does that make sense to people? Um, other things you can have are images. So this is actually really useful, like when we want to pull data, like if Apple wants to web scrape and find a bunch of images on our website, um, it's using the IMG tag. And so that this is, okay, oops, sorry. There we go. Sorry. IMG tag here. And then we see this attribute here, and this is the source of the, um, the image. So usually when we actually do um, look for images, we usually are looking for the source, SRC, and that tells us where to find that image. And you can scrape out that um, data and find that specific image. Um, there's also things that are in here sometimes, like you know other attributes. One of them that you can see specifically for images is something called alt. So this is either idea is like if you hover over um, the image, like you know you can sometimes see like a little like um, what's it called like a little box that comes up and stuff like that and tells you stuff. This is technically used for accessibility too. So that way. Um, if someone has accessibility with their browser, the idea there is that it could like read, you know, what the description is of that image. So it's useful for people who like, you know, have be sight, sight impaired or something like that. Um, so I don't know that that information can be useful for us too. Um, note that this image, because we're telling the source is directly here, there isn't a content like tag, if that makes sense. There's no like, oh, here's the image tag content and then the end image tag. You basically will see essentially this, and you notice that it ends with um, just a regular um, angle bracket. Depending, you know, like it just it's like this works either way. You might also see it with a back uh, a forward slash and a bracket, but this will be the whole thing. There won't be any extra content like another tag like we saw with like the paragraph or the main header or like the hyperlink. Does that make sense to people? There we go. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Next, we have our list. So in this case, we can have two types of lists. We have ordered, unordered lists. So the idea here is like bullet points. Um, and basically, you have an order, unordered list tag, and then this is all of an unordered list. And then in e in, um, to say each element is going to be um, li, so a list item. So it's like, OK, and then this is an unordered list. It's going to be bullet points. And then each item is like a bullet point. Does that make sense to people? Okay. We also have ordered lists, which is the same idea of an unordered list, but instead we have like numbers. So it's going to be like one, two, three, four, five, you know, and so on, um, or A, B, C, you know, if it's indented or something. And so you will see things like, you know, okay, this is list item, this item, list item, this list item. And this would look like something like one, two, three, four, five. Cool. Um, the last thing we have is tables, which is worth talking about because a lot of times the date, like if we're scraping data, um, Usually, if it's a large amount of data that we're scraping, usually the website's already organizing it in a table because there's just like a classic way to show data, right? And so the way you do this is a little complicated, but I'll walk you guys through it. So the first thing is basically looking for this table tag. And basically, that tells you everything in here is a table. And you can see I actually wrote, um, I rendered like what that table would look like if it's HTML that goes right now. And so I have, for example, here TR, TR. And this tape, uh, TR basically is like, you can think of like table rows. Like these are gonna be essentially the columns, the name like of this table. So you can see here, this TH right here saying, okay, this is the first head, this is a header. This is the next header, and the header after that. And you can see here, that's what this is rendering right here. This is basically the TR, right? This is the TH, um, TH the first TH, TH after that, and um, the TH after that. Then after that, we have a new row, right? you can see this TR. And that's going to be this guy. And you can see it says instead of TH, we have TD. And TD basically represents uh, a table data item. So table data. So the idea here is like, oh, here's a new, you know, in this uh, row or this column, you can see this is the first data item, first column. And so you see that. Okay. And then you can see, um, you can just repeat like having more rows, right? So basically you would have, you know, the first one is like your header, typically, right? Versus the TH. And then TR with the data, table data going through. You can have multiple repeats of this, right? So you can imagine like if you have a table that's like a hundred, you know, rows down, you would have a hundred of these kind of blocks. Cool. 
Um, sound pretty good? Thumbs up. This is all sound pretty good. Any questions so far? No? Okay. Um, yeah, just know that um, this is like the general structure, but technically, like, you might see things that are tables are like kind of like, for example, you might have a header that takes up two columns and stuff like that. So just kind of be aware that like, it just will look a little different sometimes. Um, now, this is where like, these are like all the main stuff that like I said, like, oh, these are things I can really look out for. Um, there's some other things you should kind of be aware of. And one of those items, which I didn't put here, it's called the div, div tag. So div, um, I don't even know what it represents, but I think it's just like, like an empty, like it's like, oh, there is stuff in here is what that div tag usually has. And so modern websites usually use a lot of div tags, um, basically saying like, oh, like this is like a section that does not like a header. It's not like a paragraph. It's not like anything. It's like, oh, here's just a section. And usually the attributes in the div tag will tell you um, why this is div. And we'll, we'll see a little bit. We'll show some interactive, like what this looks like. But just know that div tag exists. Um, with HTML5, a lot of the div tags can be replaced with like header, nav, footer, main, aside, article, section, canvas. And there's more than that. And I'm sure there's going to be even more after that. Um, so just know that this is use, like useful, but like it's not consistently used. So some websites do use this. Some developers use HTML5. Some people use HTML5 and like using like nav, header, footer, and don't use it for like nav, mean like navigation bar, um, which is kind of like, you know, something that looks like this. Um, and they might use nav instead to do something completely different. So just know that these are just tags and say, hey, this is what it should be. But like in reality, it's more useful to look at the website itself and see how are they using this and then seeing what tag associated. Um, in my experience, usually you see a lot more div tags than any of these combined. Like you'll see, like you'll see in a second. I'll show you guys what that looks like. Okay. That's all HTML. Now, clearly from all this, you probably don't know how to build a website, but that's okay. We don't care about building both subjects. We're going to tear websites apart, right? And it's very done. Um, so that's kind of like the idea here. Um, so I will take a note on CSS. We usually don't like use them for like scraping, but like sometimes they can come be a little useful depending on like what you're trying to look at. Um, note that CSS basically is like ways to make things pretty. Like it makes things like nice and like it changes the way things look and stuff like that. So sometimes it does make sense to scrape across it, but usually you'll find like almost like not useful at all. Um, so know that they can specify like specifically like a paragraph, a header, and then say, okay, there's a class saying like, okay, everyone that has this kind of class, you'll see like, you know, this guy right here, like this dot name class. So it's like in the CSS itself, you can have an ID, which is hashtag and stuff like this. So the way you actually declare the CSS, it'll look something like this, where you have um, like, for example, this will say, okay, all tags will be, will have, will have the attribute color blue. That's kind of like the idea of like how you use HTML uh, or not the HTML, uh, CSS. So this is can sometimes be useful to scrape across. I almost never have to like really worry about the CSS itself. I usually just care about the tags and um, the data itself when I'm scraping. Cool. So yeah, that is all of HTML CSS um, that I'm really going to care about. Um, and now it's like, okay, once we kind of know the basic idea of how HTML works, how HTML docs work. Now we can actually do something called web scraping, which web scraping um, is literally just trying to scrape off the data from the walls of HTML, internet kind of stuff. Okay. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that. So let's talk about, oops, let's talk about web scraping. Here we go. So um, web scraping, I like to view it as like, like there's no other way to get this data. So I got to do it myself. Um, ideally, you probably don't want to do web scraping if you can avoid it. Um, it's just, it can get to some really interesting data, but like if you can find the data in like some other compiled form already, then like skip web scraping because it can be a lot of uh, work. So I can, uh, I kind of put a little bit, um, like I kind of put this little image too, like kind of like think of like scraping, like scraping your nails across like a chalkboard, you know, like that's how I view web scraping. It's like, got oh, so much work and it's just, it's painful. Um, I don't know. I'm sure people enjoy it. So it's just, but this is my order of preference. Like if you just want the data, right? So first is like direct access to the formatted data. So I think of a database, a CSV, some format that's already nice tabular, it's easy to flow, right? Maybe it could be NoSQL kind of database and all this stuff. Next one is like an API call. So I kind of say like, like oh, the best ideal form is like a CSV or a database because it's already formatted. We already kind of like have someone already putting that data together. It's a little bit cleaner. And then the next one's like an API call. It's like, well, okay, we can't get that data because no one's 
aggregate together, but maybe we can call an API and return some information and then we can kind of grab that. So that's kind of like the next part. And then like the third one, I would say is like scraping data, like scraping, like web scraping and stuff like that. It's kind of like, kind of the dirtiest part of like actually doing it. Um, I put four other sources because there are other ways you get data too. Like literally one of the data places like going, maybe not during COVID, but like going on the street corner and like have a clipboard and asking people like, hey, you know, like, like serving, like, what do you think about so-and-so? Or what do you think about this, you know? Um, like technically that's another way, but then it's like really awful. So usually we will, as data scientists, tend to be focused most on this stuff because it's nice and clean. Um, sometimes we'll use APIs. And then if we really have to, we do some scraping the data. And then if there's like other sources, it's almost in a lot of sense, like it's not even worth a lot of people's time because it just takes so much effort and it's so expensive to get the data there. We really just focus on like these sets of sources. So a note on web scraping ethics. Um, this is where I tell people like, okay, we're gonna scrape websites and stuff like this. And this is like, I put this together probably about a couple of years ago. It's technically a gray area. Like how much is web scraping legal versus like illegal? And in general, like the, the consensus has moved more and more towards like, if you can publicly see it, like it's not legally really against web scraping. Now I'm not a lawyer. Like this is where I say like, you know, obviously like, you know, don't do something that you like, really like, it's like, oh, well, Victor said it's okay, so I can do this. Because I do know if you're not supposed to publicly see it, but you can, that's still considered, um, that can be considered illegal. So just be aware of that kind of thing. And trust me, um, once you get really good at this, you can find some parts of like people's websites and stuff and that should be protected, that are not protected. And if you find those ways, the right thing to do is technically to let the website host whoever does it. Hey, I happen across this, unprotected set of stuff that you should be protected. I just want to let you know. But even then I would be very careful because there have been instances where someone's done this and then the company says, thanks for letting us know. You try to hack into our stuff, we're suing you. Um, and all great things happen there. So just kind of know, like if you come across something that you know you're not supposed to come, like for example, let's say you just go onto another website and you just happen to find some you know, nuclear secret um, information that should be hidden, but you just happen like type in the right thing. Um, don't be like, well, this is public data because I was able to find it and not have to put a password. Don't assume that, like, obviously. Talk to your lawyer, I guess, if it's really that sense. Um, but in general, um, if you can publicly see it, um, it's not really considered like a big issue. Um, but if you're doing it for a company, like definitely kind of consider talk to people who are a little bit higher up to just make sure this, hey, are we good cool doing this? Um, this is where I go into things like, you know, for example, other websites will also, if they don't want to web scraping their stuff, they'll try to make sure you can't web scrape it. Um, but like legally, at least, you know, again, not a lawyer, but at least legally, it's pretty okay. Um, for example, LinkedIn, Airbnb, don't really want to, like, especially Airbnb, don't want you to scrape like their listings to see like how to compete, you know, compete with it. So it's publicly available. Like, you could go find it and stuff like this. But what they do is they'll change out the tags in HTML. So it's, you can't consistently do it. Like it will change, you know, um, essentially over time. It's, and they use some encryption and stuff like some interesting stuff, but like they make it harder to do. So just kind of be aware um, that you can do it, but sometimes it takes a lot of work. All right. Now, yeah, like I said, web scraping ethics, just kind of be aware of what you're scraping. And you can avoid this if you focus on these two parts, but if you have to, just kind of be aware. All right. So let's actually do some code now. <laughs> like, let's like, move past like it's like oh theoretical stuff let's do some things so first thing we have the dom just consider dom like the way of thinking how the structures work um so we're going to think of things like siblings and children descendants and parents so it's kind of like the tree structure of xml um so basically things are like oh we have like you know the html the body and then inside the body we have different sections and stuff so that's what we're going to consider when we're scraping and um there's a bunch of other packages um i learned it with beautiful soup uh, for web scraping, but note there's things like Selenium, and there's other web scraping packages that are really useful and really powerful. Um, but I like be um, beautiful suit just because it's kind of simple. Like, like usually it's like 90, maybe like 95% of most things I really want, I can just do through the beautiful suit and request. Okay. Um, so I have beautiful soup here. You, you'd have to install this, which I think it's installed actually from the learn environment. We're just gonna find out because I actually I'm on the learn environment. We'll see if this imports. And then I also have requests. So we already seen requests, basically just gets the web page itself. So we're gonna use the request to get the web page and then feed that web page into Beautiful Soup, which will make it nice and easy for us to parse through. 
And then also import RE, which I don't know if anyone's seen RE yet from the curriculum. Um, not seeing anyone shaking their head too hard or anything like that. So I think it's in there. But then this is for regular expressions, which can allow us to like parse a little bit easier. But in general, I usually don't even have to do this. I usually can focus mostly on these two packages and be perfectly good. Okay. So let's see if this works. Good. It is installed. All right. So you guys should be able to run this code too. It'll be fine. All right. So the first thing to step is actually getting the web page. So the first step is like, okay, let's actually, I'm going to make this function versus like you could technically write this all out. So I'm just gonna break down this function. It's called get soup. And basically that's gonna say uh, get soup of a URL and say, like, okay, this is gonna be the actual web page. And then I'm just using this header, basically just saying, hey, like this is sure like we don't get blocked. So like if you don't use a header, sometimes certain websites will say, hey, like, like I see you're a bot. I don't want you web scraping my page. So they'll just block it. Um, it's not like like it's not really a hard like thing to get past, but it just make sure they don't get spammed on their um, stuff. So you might have to pass in a header. Um, then actually getting the web page, this is using request.get, uh, we saw this before, the URL, and then just passing this header. So this right here is going to literally return the string of the web page itself. And then we're just going to return, in this case, I have it in a tuple, um, the web page, and then beautiful soup is the actual package that's going to call it. And it's basically going to say, okay, get the content of that web page, and then use an HTML parser. So this is just specific to beautiful soup here. Um, the HTML parser. It's basically say, okay, we get the content, which is all the in the string format, and then parse it, it knowing that it's going to be HTML. Okay. Does that make sense to people, those three lines of code? Okay. So I'll write this function. And let's actually check out the website that I am going to do. So this is going to log us. I think we should have. We'll see if it works, though. So it's Android Police. And so you can see this page right here, and you can see the ads and all crazy stuff going on and stuff like this. And so there's actually, this is a whole HTML document. So if I actually go, um, at least in Chrome, and there's other uh, browsers that do similar, similar thing. Um, you can just do inspect. And you can see here on the right, you guys see this right here, like this doc HTML stuff like this. This is literally the HTML document. And you can see here is that we have the doc type, HTML, HTML, and we've got some extra attributes right here. Um, and then we have head, right? That's the head. Like, the head um, that we talked about in the body. And in this case, it looks like there's a bottom thing. It looks like it's an ad or something like that. But you can see here the main stuff's going to be in the body. And when we expand this out, because it's more like a tree, you can see here like there's a bunch of extra information. The saved script, we can ignore that. It's running extra JavaScript things. We have a div I mentioned. Um, div, div, div. And you can see div, 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 div. And so there's a bunch of different sections. And what I like about inspect, you can probably see on the left side, things are getting highlighted. So when I like scroll over here, you can actually see what section's what. So for example, if I scroll over on this side, you can see this like article looking like a little article blurb. If I scroll down to, there we go. You can see this class right here. This looks like it says class post and that the, the classes are just separated by spaces. Like, oh, it looks like this is a post, which makes sense. If I expand this, I can actually look at other things that are inside this like section. And you can see like only that section is being highlighted, right? That's from that div. If I go, go one further, you can see, oh, there's the header, for example. It's kind of like the title. Looks like there's a subtitle in there. If I expand this out, you can see, oh, there's a link to some comments. There is, let's see here. See, I don't know if this is. It looks like a hotness meter. Okay. And then it looks like, okay, this looks like this is highlighting the whole like actual writing stuff. And there's some extra meta stuff. So this is probably like H2 would be what I'm curious about. And you can see here is the actual like, um, like title of the article. And you can see that here's the subtitle just underneath that. And you can see there's even a link to like, you know, in this case it would probably take you to the article itself. Okay. So it's kind of like how you can explore it. And you say, oh look, there's the kind of like this um like the image right here. I could, for example, keep scrolling through, but I could also like right-click it, click inspect, and you'll see it highlight where I want. And you can see here, oh, there's the image class right here. And you can see, oh, image, right? And you can see the source. And I can actually, it's fun, so I can actually take this source right here and let's go to this right here. And you can actually see there's the image. So for example, let's say I wanted to scrape this website. I just want to take all the images from these different posts. So you can scroll down, you can see all these different posts. Um, I can find this image and actually download this image and pull up all the images and stuff like that, and the articles and stuff. Make sense? So you can see a lot's going on here. So we want to programmatically, what's nice is that they should all have similar formats. So we'll kind of do some web scraping with that. So let's go back to our code. So, all right, I wrote this function. We saw that. I'm going to go ahead and get this page, like literally this page. And then let's get it into a page and soup. So know that this is just my own function. In this case, the page should just be the actual request response, right? 
So for example, if I did page.content, I'll actually see the string of like the, like the HTML document. You can see that's super long. So for example, if you look at this right here, like you'll see that's literally what this document is right here. So like this is literally like basically all of this put in string. Make sense? And it's like, okay, like this is cool, but like you can see, like I could technically look at this, but man, it'd be tough, right? <laughs> like trying to find like exactly what I want, you know? I could, for example, I think I can just do this right now. Um, image, like you can see, oh, there's an image right here and I can actually find the images and stuff, but that'd be a huge pain in finding exactly where this happens. And that's where Beautiful Soup does a really great job. It actually created this soup and look at this. So what's nice is that Beautiful Soup actually has the content in there and it's organized in this tree structure. But if I actually just print it out, it'll print out um, the structure of like what um, the document is supposed to look like. So if I scroll like halfway through, you can see it's a little bit easier for us to read. Um, and there's more than just saying, oh, it makes it nice and pretty to read. It actually allows us to parse through it. Well, everyone's following me so far? I know I'm showing you like, showing you like a lot of like words, but like I think it's pretty fun. Right? You guys are you guys are good on that thumbs up, so that's awesome. All right, so image equals soup dot find all. So this way I can find all the image tags. So I just run this, boom. Okay, it basically took this whole um, string, and I can see, for example, in this case there are eighty two images. And if I want to print out the first image, I can see the first image is this guy right here. Um, and you can see there's a whole long thing right here, HTTP, blah blah blah, blah all this long stuff. I can actually look at the source. Let's check out the source. If I click on this, hey, there's the source. And if you actually go back to the original web page, let's see. You see, I don't even know where it is. It's somewhere. <laughs> that image is somewhere in this uh, page, but um, that's where this guy comes from. I bet it's over like on the sidebar or something like that. I was trying to see if I could find it. I don't think sees it. Oh, there. Maybe this is the first one. I don't know. Whatever. That's the first image that I had. Or that's the second image, I guess, technically. So cool. All right. So we can, for example, print out all the sources of all these images. So I have 82 different sources. And you can see here, I can go ahead and just open each of these guys in a new tab. So we already saw this one. You see another image and such. And then you can see all the different stuff. In this case, these are different, like these are what we call relative links. So you can see this WQ content. So I have to like basically, if I took this, for example, I might have to go to Android police and then put in oops, there you go. So you can see this is a this is what we call a relative link. So instead of having the whole HTTPS, I have to say okay, whatever the source um, URL is, and then adding this at the end of it. So that's why this is a slash here, kind of like a file name if you guys imagine that. So cool. Like all right, got a bunch of images. What if we want to find all the divs? Well, there's a lot of divs. We'll see. There's like what 464. Okay. So if I wanted the first like 10, you can see here. It's like okay, there's a different like you can think of divs as like being the different sections and stuff like this. And so just finding all those different sections and you can explore it a little bit this way and find the different uh, classes. So let's say, for example, I look for like the fourth um, div and I say, okay, let me find the other siblings. So siblings you can kind of imagine are like things that are not nested. It's kind of like next to in the list, right? So this is just finding all of the divs, right? Like internally. So you can see here is the first one, second one, third one. Um, no, this third one goes all the way to here, it looks like. Oh, maybe it goes further. Oh, sorry. This is like a nested div. So you see how this div hasn't ended yet? These are all nested going through. This is the first element. So you can see a little bit what's going forward. So if I just wanted to find, let's say, the fifth one, that's what I have here. It's this guy right here. Okay. So you can see, okay, this is all the content in there. And you can see that's the whole div, that's the whole section that's in there. And if there's a div within a div. But I want to find something that's like adjacent to it, that's the next siblings, I can do, okay. By the next sibling, and you can see here in this case, I get all these. So this can be really useful. If I go back to when we were doing inspect source, so this is like the article. So let's say, like, oh, there's an article. I figure out what div this is. And you can see here, I'm going to go up to the actual article itself. So I don't know. There we go. I just wanted to highlight over here so I didn't have to search for it. So you can see here is that this would be like, oh, that's the whole article itself. But I want to find not this article, which is highlighted right here. I don't want to find this article. I want to find the next article. 
Well, that would be the next sibling, most likely. In fact, if I scroll down just a little bit so you can see this, there's the first article. Oh, that would be the next article. And that, those would be siblings to each other. You guys see kind of like how they're not nested within. Okay, cool. So that's kind of like the idea of how you might find the next siblings. So that's how you can find, for example, on this certain div, find the next siblings and actually look at like, oh, what are the other articles in there? Um, you can also find all, like I did before, like find all div, but say, oh, I only want to find the posts. So for example, we saw is that this class right here, you see how there's post right there. So we can say, okay, let me just find all the posts and I can go ahead and run this guy. And you can see there's 10 different posts and I can actually go ahead and list out the first one in here. And you can see here, there's the first post and let's see here, let's see if we can find the header. So header class, doo -doo -doo -doo. And let's find some words. Oh, Plex thinks you will pay more. I copy this, Command F. I'm just finding it within here. To do Command F, paste in there, and you can see that was this article right here. I see that. So then from that point, I can then actually investigate further and grab like you know the image and such. Okay, and that's kind of the idea, like how you would like do like back and forth like web scraping and kind of exploring like what you see, what you want. And then actually exploring it with some kind of um, like beautiful soup. Okay. Now, in general, I find it useful. Like, if websites are good at this, um, like, and they're not really worried about people scraping it, so it makes it easy. Um, you can just find a certain class. For example, you can find it in this case, it was like posts, and I can find all the posts in there and then explore from there. Sometimes they're not as easy, which means you have to do more structured, like, you know, finding the next sibling or finding the parent. Or child and all that stuff, which is just going to be more pain. So just kind of know that sometimes that just takes more effort. Um, but if you have a choice between like, do I find by structure or do I find by like the, the class name attributes, like go with the class name attributes. Usually that's going to get you hit directly versus trying to find, oh, here's like this, this like section and then go, then go three sections in and then dig deeper. Unfortunately, some websites just don't have it um, labeled in that way. So if I, for example, I don't know if this actually is going to have anything, but like sometimes you'll have like, if you can see this div class band nav, there might be something that just like div and that's all it says. And there's no way to get that except knowing the structure of how to get to that point. Does that make sense? Because I can't just search for, oh, class band. It would just be like, oh, just div. And it's just like, oh, it's the fourth element after, you know, the body class or whatever, or the body tag. That makes sense, people. All right. So how are we overall feeling? Like thumbs up, thumbs down, sideways. Can you follow most of it? See some sideways. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, there's a lot going on here. So I wouldn't expect you to be like, like, oh yes, like I like for the record, like thumbs up if you think like, yeah, I can now go web scrapes a bunch of pages now. Uh, probably not, right? Probably like no back to like it's more sideways right but that's okay so let's see here we have about oh we have about 45 minutes right yes so we have about 45 minutes left of class um so i'm what i'm going to do now is i'm going to kind of walk you through a little bit of like how you might do a web scraping like you know build this up from scratch so i'm going to pull up actually a new notebook let's start making new notes Oops. that should be fun we can do notebooks like okay and for the record i actually have another notebook that i'm going to reference on the side here but we're going to kind of pretend like it's just like oh we're starting from scratch like i haven't looked at this website yet so we're going to just practice this out and what we're going to do is we're going to go to this website here so i'll send this in the chat so you guys can follow along so we're going to go over to this website i don't know if anyone has watched Adventure Time. Okay, <laughs> so I'm you give a quick thumbs up. Um, it is a uh, Carly too. All right, it is a surprisingly great show. Um, I got my wife watching it, and then she's like, "This is pretty great." Um, <laughs> uh, it definitely feels like a very like um, kid like show, if that makes sense. Um, but it definitely has some really interesting stuff. And I found uh, on fandom here. Um, let's see if I can go back to. Let's go back. Let's see. Right, it's been a while since I've actually gone to this page, so that's why it's kind of throwing me off a little bit. Okay, so what's cool about this um, show 
is that first of all, you can see like, let's say I wanted to do for whatever reason, NLP project, a natural language processing project. And I want to observe like the scripts and stuff like this. So in this case, this is actually all user generated. So we should note that like, this might not be exact. There might be some inconsistencies and stuff like this. For example, if I scroll down, you will see is that there are some um, that are missing, you know? So like people haven't put those things in there. Um, but I like this one because it's got a lot of stuff going on in the transcript. If anyone's watched the show, it's got some like weird words. Um, there's a character that is like a unicorn um, that speaks in Korean. Um, so like there's Korean, like, you know, um, words and stuff like this. So here's like, like literally the first episode and you can see what the transcript might look like. So we say like, oh, the episode begins in the Candy Kingdom. Jake is playful chasing Lady Rainicorn. So you can see ours like, oh, there's some already weird words in here that would be interesting. Like, you know, it would be unique to this show. Um, and you can see actually the character here, Jake, we see there's a hyperlink. It says, yeah, you can get this. You see there's a look, kind of like action here. You can see here Lady Rainicorn only speaks in Korean. Um, and in this case, it looks like uh, they even give a little translation so you can actually know what they're saying um, if you don't speak Korean. Um, and you can see a little bit what's going on here and you can see a little bit what's going, like different stuff, but there's things like my decorpse uh, de uh serum. So there's a weird words that are definitely not like typical words and stuff like this. Um, there are things like algebraic, like there's a lot of interesting things you could kind of bring up like NLP and try to observe this stuff. Um, so I think it's a really interesting like use case of like stuff. And you can see here those are the characters. So those, some are reoccurring, um, some be a little hard, you know, so cool stuff. All right, so what we do is like we want to scrape this web page or these transcripts and just pull out the data from here. So like, how would we do this? So let's go to the new notebook I have. I'm gonna put it right here. Let's close these guys. So I have this new notebook. And the first thing we wanna do is actually go ahead and import some packages, right? So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and import, um, well, you need to web scrape, so go import requests, right? Go import. Um, and for the record, I'm looking on the side here because there's another notebook because otherwise it would take me forever to do all of this from like complete memory or um, on the spot, spot, but we can maybe do a little freeform as we go through. So from BS4, import. Okay. And note that BS4 is the actual package and beautiful soup is the actual function. So I'm just calling it that, right? And then uh, for good measure, I'm going to import Candice because I just have to make it nice little data. It's like, okay, I'm importing this stuff in here. So the first thing we do is actually like load the, let's call it, actually load the, the web page, right? So let's go ahead and say, okay, I'm gonna say like, you know, load web page. And we're just gonna start off with one web page because you can see here, this is my first transcript, which we'll start off with. But eventually what we'd like to be able to do is like cycle through like every single transcript in here, right? And pull up a new episode in their transcript. So you can see here in a new page, there's like new information in here. So we're, we're gonna start off simple though. So we're gonna start off with this web page. So say load um, a specific web page episode. Yeah. So we're gonna load that. And then afterwards, I'm just gonna make a new cell underneath this. Later on, we're gonna pull that in there and we're gonna do something like, you know, um, find all the um, uh, transcript data. Okay, because remember, we don't want like, I don't want um, to go back to that episode. I don't want this stuff. Like maybe I can do some interesting things, but this is all HTML. So I wanna skip over this. There's an ad right here. I'm gonna skip that. I really just wanna find this stuff right here and scrape all of this information. Does that make sense? Yeah, cool. So, so, okay, find transcript data. And then after we find the transcripts data, let's go ahead and like uh, load data, oops. load data into a data frame. Okay, That's pretty good, makes sense. And this is where I tell people like writing comments first, right? Kind of helps us just break us down a little bit, like what our steps are gonna be. In this case, I made a different styles because I know we're gonna make, you know, loading a specific web page episode is gonna take some effort, right? For me to find out, so. I'm just making in different cells just logically. So okay, how do we do this? So let's go ahead and just say, all right, let's do the page URL. So notice I'm saying specific page and I'm calling it, instead of just passing in later on, like, you know, we can use beautiful soup and then calling over um, and then just pasting in the web page. Eventually what I might want to do is change this where I can for loop like over, again, going back to this guy. I might like want to loop over say, okay, there's the first page do, you know, pull in the data and then go to the second page, pull in the data. 
So I'm kind of preemptively naming my stuff so I don't have to name it later on. Does that make sense to people? Okay. Cool. All right. And feel free to interrupt me if I'm like, uh, you guys have any questions. So I'm gonna see the page URL and I'm gonna pull up this specific one. And the reason I'm doing like the reason why I'm doing it this way too, instead of going like, oh, oops, I know I copied. Sorry, my keyboard's a little bit different than my phone. So it's like I'm doing like Command C versus Control C. Um, all right, so note that I'm starting off with this page because I wanted to see if I can get this one page working, and then I can expand it out into like looping over the main page. Okay, um, what's a good practice? Okay, okay, I have the web page right here, so we know that's good. We know that's the web page. Cool. So then how do we get, um, so what's the what's the next step that we want to do? Anyone want to chime in? <laughs> That's okay. All right, I'll help guide you guys through it. So we have the web page, right? And we want to actually like get the data from there, right? So the way we can do that, it's like, oh, we can use the request library, right? So for example, I do request um, and then I can get dot get right and then I can say the page URL right and so remember this is going to return then it's going to load this guy you can see the status but if I wanted the content you can see here there I get the document right so that's kind of the first step we really want to get to so let's just go ahead and load the full request and a common thing that we'll use something like just call this uh, whole thing um, when the request library does a dot get what is it like? What does it return? What do we call that? Starts with an R. No. No. no? Dom. Okay. Dom. Mm, not quite. I mean, you're right though. It's like a Dom. We call it the response in general because it could be like, for example, I'll show you. For example, if I do like, that's not true. Like that's not going to work. If I didn't do put the response. You can see here 404 page, which if you guys know what 404 means like the page not found. So it's kind of good practice. Say, oh, this is the response, which might not be anything, right? It might be like, oh, you had an error. So that's kind of why we have this response in here. So um, let's go back to change that. So I have the response here. And let's go ahead and say, okay, well, what we want, we have the response. And we're just going to kind of skip over like that status okay code, just because we're kind of playing around with stuff. I'm going to call it soup equals beautiful soup. And then remember, I have to get the response. And I'm going to do the text. Um, it's a little bit easier if we do text versus like um, content. And then I'm going to do HTML. Oh, sorry. And again, like, would you remember this one? Like, no, you might have to look it up or like look at your passcode, which I am literally looking at my passcode for the record. Like, you can see a little bit what's going on. So, okay, I've got my soup here. And you can see now, if I print out my soup, you can see it's nice and pretty. Okay, makes sense. Cool. Any questions, any comments so far? Pretty good. All right. So if I'm being a good little pro, like little data scientist programmer, um, what I want to do is actually create this into a function, right? Because like this is nice, but like I want to do this over probably multiple times. So just to be extra careful, I was like, okay, I'm gonna create a function called diff um get page source or let's say so, uh, page text. Okay. Um does that make sense? Yeah, it seems like a good. Uh, thing. And in this case, I'm going to pass in page URL. And then what's nice, I can just get rid of this guy. Let's just go ahead and get rid of this. Okay. Indent these guys. Boom. And then I can just do a return. And I'm going to do a response. On a soup. Or if I want, I don't know, maybe, maybe a soup first. Because I kind of want to be soup little. So response. Okay. So this way, I have a nice little function now. And now if I wanted to actually call this, like, okay, let me get, for example, like um, the first page, say, okay, uh, let's call it first page is equal to this guy. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out this stuff. There we go. So first page, oops, I need that. There we go. I think that looks good. Sorry, I can't see the end of this. Okay, so first page, and then I can say, okay, let me just like first, uh, page content, it's equal to get page text, and then I'll put in first page. Make sense? 
And in this case, if you remember, I'm thinking like, oh, I want the content, but remember what this would actually return. This is actually gonna return a tuple. You can see it like, for example, there's the text or the soup comma the response. So let's just say, oh, I just want the content. I can do comma and I can say like, you know, first page response, but I'm just gonna ignore right now. So I can use an underscore. So note that underscore, do you guys remember seeing this kind of pattern, this underscore? That basically just means like, I don't really care what it is, just like, don't name it anything. But then what happens, I can get just the first page instead of a tuple, I can get the actual content itself um, and not worry about the response. Does that make sense to people? Yeah, okay, cool. So cool, all right, I got the got the document, right? Like, like, all right, you can see like not too much code, it took us a little bit to write something, but now I got a nice thing where if I wanted a new page, I can get new content, right? So that's kind of nice for us, all right. So we got this. Next, we got to find the, all the transcript data, right? Which that's probably gonna take us a bit. So let's kind of go through here. Um, how how might we would proceed if we wanted to find the transcript data from this web page here? Any ideas? We could inspect the page and figure out where the uh, the transcript starts. Yeah, yeah. And what's nice is that this page is really nice because it shows transcript. So we can do inspect, like Eric said. Do an inspect and you say, oh, cool. Like, okay, we found the transcript here. And we say, okay, transcript. You're like, ah, this is where I say, like, ah, man, this is gonna be a little frustrating. Why might I say this is frustrating? Because we found like the transcript, like where it starts. Like, why might I say, oh, this, this is gonna be a little bit different. Yeah. So one thing I kind of mentioned is like I like when everything's like structured, like nested in each other. The problem is now is like it's not nested, it's just like, oh, here's the transcript, you know. Um, heading H2. And then after that, it looks like there's all the data afterwards, but it's not nested within it. So we're going to have to use a relative path, like not relative, path, the relative structure, right? It's like, oh, everything passed H2. So um, just looking ahead, we'll kind of play around with this. Like, okay, we can find H2 um, for transcript. And it looks like in this case, there's no class, but we can find, for example, span class MW headline ID transcript. Ah, ID is nice because ID can only be for one thing in the whole document. So if I know if I look for ID transcript, I know for sure um, that's not going to change. Okay. So I'm like, okay, that's one way we can do this. But you can see a little bit of the kind of like we could do relative path, but I really just want to find like these things. So like let's check out like the actual um, transcript here. And we see this extra like DL. In fact, I don't really know what that is. I think that's data line, data data. Like this might be more HTML5 stuff and like whatever. It looks like that's all the data that's stored in there. And you can see it's like, okay, it looks like there's some data in here. It's like, okay, this is how can I pull this, pull this out. And actually, I'm look for the record, I'm looking on the right right now through like my code. My code, this website has changed since I wrote written my code. So this actually will not work the way I originally planned it. So we're gonna have to play a little bit with like how this is gonna work. Um, so we're gonna have to figure that out. So I think in this case, it used to be for the record on my code, I could find this data line and actually find um, the content from here. I'm actually clicking to see if I did something different. I saw the code here, but it doesn't look like it. So what I can try doing is like um, what Eric suggested is finding H2 and then using like my structure to kind of parse through it, right? It's like, okay, everything after H2. I'm like, oh, I kind of, that's like one extra step that I'm kind of worried about. What if, for example, they change transcript to something else? So maybe I can just say, well, let me just find all the DLs. Like I think DLs, it should only be, looks like all of the, like the code. And it looks like, you know, oh, what's this? paragraph right here. Let's find out. I'm assuming it's going to be an see DL episode ends. Oh, good. So that means we can kind of like stop right here and we know there's not going to be other DL stuff. So what I'm going to do instead, which like, again, I want to say again, what Eric Smith like suggested is probably like one way you could do this and it would work perfectly fine, but I'm going to be lazy and find just all the DLs. Okay. So if I want to find all the DLs, how can I do that? I got idea. Let's start off with the content first, right? So first page content. I'm just saying tab here, by the way. Um, and then I can do dot find all, right? And then what do I want to find? All the DLs, right? So let's just call this a variable. Let's just call this transcript lines. And then let's actually print this up. 
And I'm like, okay, cool. Like this, I think this looks reasonable. In fact, I can probably count this out. Like, um, let's do print land of transfer lines. You can see here, there's 218 lines. Okay, that seems that seems about what it should be. And let's go kind of through. You can see it goes in order too, so that's kind of nice. So I just scroll down to the bottom here, and it looks like last line is Finn squeezes him and starchy farts. Look, no. It's, yeah, good. That's what we found. So good. All right, cool. We, we found what we wanted. All right. So that makes it a lot easier for us to have to go through. Um, if I was being really extra careful, uh, so what, what's one issue I, that can be the way I did this? What can be an issue? If you have the word ladle or something like that in there. Um, it turns out, no. It turns out um, the beautiful soup will actually only look at tags called DL. Okay. Um, it, so that's, yeah, that's a good thing to point. Like, you know, like, oh, what if there's a DL in the words? Like, now nah, it turns out it just looks like the tags. Um, there's actually something a little more subtle. I don't know if anyone knows it. Um, so the big thing is, is that I am looking at the first page content, which is the whole document and finding all DLs. It doesn't seem like this is an issue here, but one potential issue could be is that what if there's other DLs somewhere in this um, document structure. Like maybe there's another, like if DL's up here. And so one thing you could do, and this is what um, I have uh, close to my other code. One thing you can do instead is first finding like, for example, like the main content. And that main content can be everything after a certain section. So for example, if I know all of this is like in one section, I can look, for example, like in this div, looks like this div right here, I can find, okay, let me go ahead and get everything. Oops, this is wrong. Let's see what this is first nested in. See, normally I would have it a little bit more expanded, but I can see where this is nested into. And it looks like it's nested into right here. So this would be like, I was like, oh, let me search here. Or I can find structurally like, oh, where it starts, like Eric had mentioned, and that might be a little bit safer. Um, but I'm just gonna assume DL is fine and just kind of continue on. But I could define something like main content and say, oh, only look for DLs in this section. And then instead of looking at first page content, I instead inspect main content. Does that make sense to people? Okay, cool. But I'm gonna skip that because I'm a cowboy and I'm just gonna go for it. All right. So we got a transcript line, it's cool. All right, so the thing about this though, is like, well, this is not super great. <laughs> I got like this extra, Tags and stuff like this. So like the way I can kind of actually do this, like, well, I really just want to find not the DL part, but really find the DD. So I can actually find within those transcript lines, find the DD sections, and then just get the content from here. Okay, does that make sense to people? So you can see here, like I have DL, DD, and I just really want this section. If I look closer, maybe this would make more sense if I do DL. And you see all the DD is the actual content of that line. So what I can do here then is like, okay, let me just go ahead and pull up, um, let me make a new thing right here underneath. I'm actually gonna just how. Okay, we have all the transcript lines and let's just do four line and transcript lines. And let's just do the first, let's just do the first like 10, just to like, so we don't have to like do the whole thing that may mess up. Well, let's do that and say, like, okay, let's go ahead and do, um, Kind of look at my code here and say, oh, that's not really what I want. So we're going to do like line dot find, and then um, let's say, what was it, DD? Yeah, DD. So DD. And let's just print this guy. Um, oh, let's call this like, I'm just going to call something bad, like X. And I'm going to print X. So, okay, this is a little bit clearer, but let's kind of confusing. So let's just stop it after the first one. So I did a break. So you can see here, it's like, okay, this is me just trying to try things out. It's like, okay, I'm getting this part. I'm like, okay, that's good. But I don't want, I don't want this, right? I want, I want just this stuff inside. So we can actually get this stuff in here. I can do a dot text. So this is like more um, beautiful soup. I can actually pull the stuff out there. And there you go. That's what we want. So now I don't have the extra like, you know, um, tags and stuff like this. I just get the text itself, like how I normally see it, um, like right here, which, okay, let's see if then, I'm going to close this guy for a second. Let's see if we can kind of reproduce the first 10 lines. So let's just do the first 10 lines and let's just do get rid of this break statement and run this guy. 
like, okay, cool. This is looking pretty good. Like, I think that's close to like what you'd want, right? You can see each line being written out. Make sense to people? Yeah, cool. And again, that dot tax is just specifically to beautiful soup. I was like, oh, just give me the tax. I don't want any of the extra tags. So, okay, cool. This is actually looking pretty good. So let's just try it now with, um, instead of 10 lines, let's try it with all of the lines, just to make sure this works. And let's see here. All right, things are looking good, pretty good. Now, one thing you might want to do, this is kind of like me looking ahead, um, like things that are good practices, is that this could fail, right? Like maybe, for example, there's no DD in this DL for some reason, right? And the thing is, like, if it's if it fails on that first one, it kind of means that your program's stuck, right? So what you can do is something called a try accept block. Give me a thumbs up if we have seen try accept blocks already. Okay, I see some nods. Okay. So I see some head shakes, that's okay. Um, might just be in the curriculum that it hasn't been a while. Or don't think I am interested, but basically what it's gonna do, it's gonna try doing this code. And if this fails, like there's some error, it's just gonna do something. In this case, I'm gonna do print um, something off. And then what's gonna happen. So for example, if I did this, I did like, um, so let's just do like X, or let's just do like one divided by zero. Like you can't do that, right? So it's gonna get an error. So it's gonna happen here. It's gonna print something went wrong here. Okay, I'm just doing this. Wait, that actually worked. That worked. Did I run this? Sorry. Oh, oh, it's, it's showing every. Sorry. Let's just get rid of this guy because it's running that cart and then like trying one by zero. So you can see something went wrong, something went wrong. But it's running the code every single time. So that's kind of what I'm trying to get at. So I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Or just have this in try accept block, just because I was like, okay, cool. Like we can actually get the text right here, and I'll just call this something better, like text. Or let's say, um, yeah, let's call it text line. Okay, so that's like the the actual data and stuff like this. Like, okay, cool. Like I got a little thing here, but I want to keep this, right? So if I want to keep this, I'm gonna keep it. I can make it into like a new list, right? Say, so, okay, let's say, um, say text. I'll just call it lines. How's that? That makes sense, people. Let's call it lines. And I'm just going to append it, right? So I'll do like lines dot append. There we go. Cool. And so, like, okay, if I just to double check that it did work, I can do lines. And you can see here, okay, cool. I got everything I wanted, right? Um, I might do some extra stuff, like if I might strip out like some extra spaces and stuff like that, or do some processing that I didn't want. But now I have each line, right? So this is looking pretty good. Um, if I wanted to at this point, I could actually say, okay, like, you know, PD data frame, and then like data is equal to lines. Oops. Did I import PD? Oh, that's PD. There we go. And you can see here, like I can get each line. So like, okay, cool. I got like each line, but like, you can kind of see a little bit like, maybe there's something else I want in here. Um, and I'm just gonna throw in like a scenario here. like, what would I want from this is maybe I wanna know not just what the line is, but like who says it. Like in this case, it says Jake and then actually says what they said. So maybe I want to actually like say, oh, in this data frame, I want who said it and then what was said. Does that make sense? So how, how might I do that? For example, let's just look at a line that looks like the uh, second line. So let's do line one. So you can see here, Jake. How could I get this so I get just, you know, I want essentially Jake and then what Jake said. Split on colon or something. Yeah, let's do a dot split here. So let's do a split, a colon, and there you go. You see, I got two little elements in here. Looks pretty good, right? Awesome. Cool. So, um, what I can then do, right, is something like, okay, like let's say like this is like um, split lines. I'm just gonna call that variable. And I say, okay, like, you know, I can say like uh, character. I'm gonna move this actually down just to, it's kind of like, like I'm trying to load it into a uh, data frame, right? So I say, okay, character is equal to split lines. And then you the first one. And then what should be, uh, let's see if like, I don't know. Um, what, what do I want to call this? You think? I don't know. I'm just thinking of a good variable name. Say 
dialogue. That's not how you spell dialogue, is it? And if, when you're programming, you don't remember what it is, just put dialogue. There we go. All right. I'm showing my, my bad spelling. Okay, the lines, one like this, right? This looks pretty good. Character. Cool. And I guess this is not really the best way because you can see it's like two. So it looks like just one line. So let's just do print. Print. Uh, dia. OK, cool. So you guys see that? Like how we have the dialogue, we have the character, right? Um, does this look good to everyone? Any comments? Where might this fail? Oh, good question. There's another colon anywhere in the sentence or whatever or in the dialogue. Yeah, so let's just pretend like if I just do, uh, um, let's call this like, instead of lines one, let's call this like, just L, I'll split and insert. And let's just call, um, instead of lines, so L equals, I, then go. That's an issue, right? Because now I'm missing part of this colon, right? So what, what could we do instead? How could we fix this issue? I let to do only the first colon it finds. OK, so how could we do that? Good, that's a good idea, Becky. Becky did the hard work. Anyone else know how to? Two columns, comma, I don't know. I never done that. Yeah, if you're never sure, right? We can always look it up, right? So like I just do um how about split? Okay, so I'm looking at the documentation. It's like okay, it looks like self there. Oh max split minus one, max split maximum we're supposed to do. Okay, so we can do max splits equal in this case two, right? Because we have that guy. Aaron, follow me on how I figure that out. Okay, so let's do max splits equals, just one split, sorry, right? So there we go, cool. Aaron, make, does that make sense to everyone? Cool. Um, now, technically, there might be another issue where maybe someone's name has a colon in it. Like, you know, this is where like, this is why cleaning data can be super messy and like trying to, but we're just gonna assume that's true, right? But maybe I put a little comment in here and say like, um, you know, gets the um, assumes first split is at the name. Um, and I say like, you know, assumes name has no. Okay, so this way I kind of look at this later on. Maybe I can fix this. I can even make this like a classic one you might see is like to do. And then you can like say, oh, I come back to this kind of deal and just search for to dos. We're just going to put that little note in there. OK, um, looks pretty good, right? So let's do the first line. There's another way you can fail. Ooh, what happened here? What lines here? Ain't got an idea? No, first of all, <laughs> that's the real reason. OK, I think it's lines, right? Yeah, lines. So let's do lines, this one. OK, cool. Oh, whoa, what's, what's going on here? That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> um, so let's let's check out what line zero is, right? Uh, so what happened? Missing the entire line has a list, or like it turned the list into a, a string, actually. So there's no zero. Mm -hmm. Like the character name doesn't appear in line zero. Mm. Yeah, that, maybe, maybe it didn't split on one of on one of the lines. It didn't split. I don't know. Yeah, so I'm I kind of changing. This is the actual line itself, right? So this is like if you debugged it, right? Like how you would do this. You might split this up into different parts. So in this case, L line zero is this guy right here. If I do, let's just copy this guy just to. Oops, it's L. Right. Oops, it was actually printed out uh, split lines. Did 
get to you now. So what's happening here, the split lines is not splitting on any colon because there is no colon in here. Colon, right. Mm -hmm. So there's no colon in there, right? So that means when it tries to do a split, it's like, okay, there's just, just the first element, which is just the normal thing. But then what happens is that when you character equals split line zero, there's a first element in there. But then the second one, ooh, there isn't a second character. Like there isn't a second element in that split because it never split. So, ooh, this is not really what we want, right? So there's a few ways we can fix this. Has anyone got an idea of how we could kind of come across this? There's a, there's a few different ways and like none of them are wrong or more right or whatever. I just, I wanna feel like how do we approach this? Parameter for that. A parameter where? Yeah, like a built-in parameter to say if there is no separator, like a separator none or something. I don't know. Yeah, so may maybe there's something in the documentation. Um, so that's one option. Anyone else got an other? Yeah, there's a bunch of, like, I just want people to like, tell me what maybe, they think. They maybe think. like a, um, an if and else. Maybe? Yeah, that's what I would say. The simplest is just what he said is if mm -hmm. no colon, whatever. I mean, I don't know how to do it, but. <laughs> Yeah, so okay, like, like say like, is there a colon in there? And then if there's not a colon, like do this, otherwise, you know, do this code, right? So yeah, you could absolutely do that. So I think I think in that case, I, I don't know if there's a specific parameter for this situation because we'd want two elements in there. You know, if we did, if we just kept this code the same, we would always need two elements in there, but split doesn't guarantee us to have two elements. So that's kind of like why we need to change this. So one way we could do this is maybe something like, um, uh, like it, it depends like what level you want to do this, but we can, for example, say, okay, let's just say if L, if there's a colon in L, okay, then do this stuff. Okay. So that's kind of like what I think Eric said and Quack was kind of saying too, right? Um, otherwise we can just say, okay, just maybe you could keep this code here. Like, you know, depending where you do the if statement, you could do the F statement here and say that there's two elements, or what you can do is say if there is a colon here, then um, split it. And then if there isn't a colon in there, we would just want, you know, L to just be, what, how would we want to do that? So you want to, you'd want to say like character equals none or something like that. Not literally, yes. maybe not the keyword none, yeah. but something like that. And then uh, dialogue or uh, equals like the full line, I guess. Yeah, equals L in this case, right? So. Or can we do like just simply pass? Oh, we could do pass. So yeah, that's it. That's another one we can do too. Just for the record, um, we could do a pass. And what would that pass do in this case if we were to iterate over the whole thing? It will not. It will just move into the, another line. Yeah, it, it just won't. It won't keep that like in our data, like our data, it will only keep, you know, ones that actually have speaking lines. So depending on your situation, you might say, oh, I only want speaking lines, you know, and I'll just do that if statement and like add it in there. Otherwise um, you can say, okay, like, well, I do want those lines in there, but like kind of what Eric was kind of going at, it's like, maybe you just call it a different character. Like, you know, let's just call it like, I don't know, let's call it like narration or something like that. Right, so that'd be the character. So if I run this now, I, I, I think I would lean towards something like this where like, oh, I want to kind of like keep every line in here, but like depending on the situation, you might just ignore it, right? And it's like, just give it over. So this way I can get a little bit of narration in here. That makes sense to people? Well, all right. And there's a whole bunch of other ways too. One way you can actually do is like count backwards um, and just get like the last character and stuff like that. And like, you know, you can do some funky stuff with numbers, but I think this is a pretty straightforward, like, hey, if there's, you know, um, a colon in there and I can say, for example, like, you know, um, split if it's a speaking line. Okay, so then it's a little bit easier for us to understand. So I might call this a function. I'll say def um, it character and speaking line. Note that in Python, we love long, <laughs> we long, we love long uh, function names. Um, and then I'll just call this, you know, I'll just call it tell. It's not the super long description, but we're just doing it on the fly. We can always do things later on. And I'll get rid of this comment. And then I'll just get rid of this guy. Okay. Aaron, follow me on that. That's pretty good. Okay. 
We're almost there, right? <laughs> so, okay, you can see a little bit where the ending is going towards. So now we can say, all right, cool. We got our, um, we're going to get rid of this guy too, because we're not, we don't need this anymore. So this was just testing it out. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. It's like, okay, now we want to actually want to do, you know, like load this in the, dick, um, the data frame at the time we're doing. So let's, let's just try to say, okay, for um, LN lines, remember that's kind of like already processed over for LN lines. Let's go ahead and um, do, for example, you know, get character. Well, we need a, a return statement in that function. Ooh, good catch. Yeah, that's important, right? Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. And I legitimately, I wasn't testing you guys. I legitimately forgot the, the return. So we would actually want to return the character in uh, dia, the dialogue, right? Uh, I'm going to, I don't like this. It's, Dialogue. You spell this. It's a D I A L O G. Oh. No. Nope. Did I have it right the first time, or did I spell it wrong? Yeah. The first time? Yeah, you had it right the first. And time. you guys said nothing. All right. Well, what I'm about the D I A L O G? Is <laughs> isn't that the same thing? Without yeah, the I, U E. U E. Dialogue that, like this. Yeah. No. It Sorry, we're going. We're going. Thing. That's okay. that's kind of different, actually, Suman. It's, it's oh, the, yeah, one it's of the. Different. It's the stupidity of English, actually, unfortunately. But that's... <laughs> like judgment. Um, <laughs> judgment. It, oh, man, we could talk, we're going to talk about NLP a whole bunch uh, later. Right. On. Yeah, uh, but OK, anyway. cool. we'll keep this dialogue with what we know. I'm so funny. <laughs> for some reason, it looked wrong for me, but oh well. All right, and let's make sure we get this right, too. OK, all right, so now we got this character in here. OK, for um, Ellen lines, we get character in uh, speaking, right? And we're gonna do this with L, and this is gonna get us the character. So we we'll just call it character, comma, dialogue. Now I'm like, like second guessing myself every time I type dialogue. All right. Oh my gosh, I keep pressing this word. Okay. You guys see that? That's pretty good. So you can see we get the character dialogue. And then, for example, we might, you know, I'm just gonna make something really simple. Um, but it's like, oh, wait, this is like, that's all we really need. We just need the character and the dialogue. Oh, that's pretty easy, right? Well, in that case, we can use a list comprehension. So let's just call this data. I just meant to type insert again, call it. Yeah, I did. Okay. Data equals a list comprehension. So I'm going to get, you know, a tuple character dialogue, or I'll just call it because um, it's kind of small. I'll call it C and D. Okay. Or uh, C before, sorry, <laughs> let's call it get character. Uh, let's call it L or L in lines. Everyone see that? How that works? Okay. And I like this because like, oh, I, I don't have to think like what kind of nested loop I have. It's like, oh, whatever get character lines is, right? Just make that into a list and we can see if I do data here. You can see, there we go. We can see that narrating stuff like this. And what makes that nice now is that when I actually um, put into a data frame, it's called df equals pb. Data frame. And then we'll just call it data. Oops. Well, let's do df.head. Look at that. It's so beautiful. All right. So you can see we can check some stuff out. So now we can go to the columns too. So I can call columns equals, I'll call it like a character. And then the other one's uh well, look at that. So now we can actually like you know, see for example, for example, I can do like you know all my favorite stuff like df dot thank you, value counts. df dot uh do character. Let's do character. Right. So you can see a little bit of like how often this happens, but really what I want is df character. Okay, and you can see, for example, how many times people say something. So, hey, look at that. And so now I have something that can actually like, you know, I just took data in from somewhere. And if I was really good at this, like I would have made these a little bit better functions. But what I could do, for example, like I can then say, like, okay, like, you know, actually iterate over um, this guy. And for example, I can make a new web scraping, find where these transcripts happen and just iterate over this list of different trans like different transcripts and then feed it into my function that could be something like I could basically encompass all of these things 
right? And encompass it into like, you know, get transcript lines and I can make this for each episode now. And so you can kind of see a little bit like, you know, the way I wrote this isn't like, like it's a little more free form, like you kind of playing around with this. I might have to go back and refactor some stuff now. For example, you know, get page text. I might put this more into a whole big function. I might call this whole function like, you know, like something like, you know, def get um, episode transcript. Does it make sense? And then it'd be like episode URL. And then this would like return, you know, like it could return a data frame, it could return, you know, like the list of like, you know, that looks something like this, right? So I can kind of build this up. Um, does that make sense to people? If we had a little bit more time, I probably would build that up right now. Um, but I think you guys get the point, right? So, yeah, cool. Um, how, how did we feel about that? Thumbs up, felt like, like reason, like can follow through, um, like sideways, like I followed it, but like, I don't know if I could reproduce this myself. Like it might take me some time, which is okay. Like, I think, I think most people would be about right here right now, but you kind of see a little bit how I went back and forth. And obviously um, I got to cheat a little bit because I did have past Victor write a little bit of something, but I did, for example, I didn't write the code like this in my past code. In fact, you can see what my past code looked like if you go to, You can actually look at my passcode and activities. You can see an example of this in, I think, Web Scraping Beautiful Soup Activity. Oh, I have it both of them. It's going to yell at me. Yeah. Um, you can see a little bit of like what I did. And I think, I don't know if this code would actually even work. Um, you have to double check. But you can like see a little bit of like what's going on. This is, I did this with another cohort. That's why there's some errors and stuff like this. But you can see a little bit of like what I could do and like how to make this work. But you can see I did it a little bit differently this time. Um, and that's perfectly fine because you might have something different. All right, so hopefully that gave you guys an idea of like what web scraping might look like. Um, and like, you can see how much work that can kind of take. Um, and also like, this assumes that like, it doesn't change. Um, I do have to head on in a second, but I will say, tell you one story is that I literally have done, um, I was writing web scraping to scrape uh, Olympic data, like data from the Olympics from their website. And I literally was working on this for the past you know, like, few weeks, you know, it's kind of more of a fun project for me. And I was like, cool, like, you know, and I'm actually gonna like run this whole, on the whole website. And he was like, oh, cool. Like I'll have my computer run it, you know, like finish the last thing, test it out. Everything looked good. I was like, oh good, I can just run this. It's like, oh, I'll run it tomorrow, you know, and I'll just look, cause I didn't want my computer to run it the whole night. I'm like, oh, I want to run it tomorrow morning. I can kind of look at it. And literally the next morning I came up to it, gonna run it. They literally changed the website and my code was completely irrelevant in then. Um, so that's the kind of the danger of web scraping, right? You're kind of relying that something else will be consistent and that you will catch all those errors too, which can be a lot of effort. So that's why I always say, say, hey, if you can get like CSV database and then get, you know, like maybe API and then web scraping is like you really have to. Okay. Cool, everyone. Well, I do have to head out. Uh, I'm gonna stop the recording here um, and I will see you all uh, tomorrow when we talk about the project. Sound good? All right, everyone. All right. Have a good day.